park right now and I've got a visitor. It's an old friend from my old sketch club back in Texas. And when he first started coming, he was 10 years old. Now he's 20. How old are you now? 19. 19? Oh yeah. my goodness. Come on up. So this is Logan. What's your uh, Instagram account? Uh, Logan Adair underscore art. So how long have you known me? How long have I known you? Uh, since I was in the third grade, right? Third grade? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> when you put it that way. <laughs> It makes us both sound old though. You're 19, I'm 40. Well, yeah, I mean, around a decade has gone by, right? So how did we meet? I think I just went to the sketch club with my dad. Really? Yeah. What was the sketch club? Let's start there. Uh, whenever I came, it was like one table. Yeah. If I remember correctly, and there were around 10 or so artists just huddled around it, cartooning, drawing, and uh, sharing stories. What was that like? I couldn't contribute a ton because I was Ten. Eight, yeah, eight or nine years old. <laughs> so I just kind of listened and... <clears throat> and. Eventually, you started like making your own comics, right? Yeah, I made some Transformers comics, and then um, I he made used to a, he used to print them and sell them, or his parents did. Yeah, I made a Western comic called Tumbleweed Justice. Oh yeah, I remember that. So what's a, what's one of your favorite moments from the Sketch Club? If I could take a snapshot, it would just be like friends, family coming and just having a good time creatively but also socially yeah do you think it helps yeah it, it helped. I think that uh, it's something that people enjoyed whenever they went to it and it definitely never uh, stopped it always seemed to keep on going forward while I was going there yeah I've always been curious of um, how has it affected your life since then being part of that group well, I think it was a very um, important period in me changing from drawing stick figures to drawing people and, <laughs> and robots or whatever I was drawing. So now you've got so a career it was at least. definitely like a huge step up, but an enjoyable step up. It wasn't like kind of pushed on anyone. It was just we were all there doing what we wanted to do. Ah, that's good. Yeah, I, tried to, I always tried to teach people where they were at not where I wanted them to be and just help them like push themselves from there to whatever the next level was for them. Sometimes that was going from stick figures to Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> Those are good times. So Logan is in Palm Springs now yep. and he's doing gallery shows for his own paintings. And you can see some of his paintings on his Instagram. Well, it's been really good catching up with you, man. You too. Yeah. So it's a little bit past midnight, and uh, I just went and saw Logan with Logan. <laughs> saw the new movie, Logan, the Wolverine movie. Uh, it was really good, really good. It's probably my favorite X-Men movie now. I highly recommend it. It's very violent, though, so don't take kids. And now I'm back, and I'm going to do a little bit of writing <laughs> before I go to bed at 1 o'clock. All right. It's a weird thing when you're a teacher because kids grow up and become adults and you feel older. <laughs> He's not the first kid that I taught when they were like eight or nine that's grown up. My first cartooning that class that I taught was when I was 19. I really shouldn't have been teaching at 19, but there you go. Uh, and there was a kid in that class that was, I think he was nine or 10. And now he's 31. <laughs> like, ah, <laughs> I'm getting old. But I've I've always had a heart for teaching. I love, I love, um, I see potential in everybody. Um, even when they don't believe it, even when they don't see it in themselves, I see it. I do my best to help people tap into that. I wasn't always very good at teaching. Uh, I think like with anything, you know, you, you're not born naturally gifted at it. It's a, it's a skill you have to develop over a long period of time. Uh, I mean, the first 10 years of my career, I would teach cartooning classes and comic book classes, and I'd try and do sketch groups, and they never really clicked, um, partly because I was still learning uh, and I didn't have the skills to back up my 
my claims. <laughs> that sketch group that Logan was talking about in our little interview was in 2006, 2007, I think, is when he first started coming. And that was at the very beginning of the sketch club, uh, of the Lubbock Sketch Club, which was inspired by a sketch club that I'd only heard about on the internet, which was Steven Silver and Marcella Vignali. They had one here in LA and I'd seen, I'd seen a blog post about it and they would post pictures every week. And I was so inspired about the idea of it that I started my own and called it sketch club. And that first group, we had about 10 artists and it started to grow and grow and grow until uh, we were in this little burrito restaurant and we'd fill up every single table in that restaurant, something like 40 or 50 tables um, with, you know, over a hundred people, all ages, little kids to families, adults, people, <clears throat> college kids, people in their, you know, retired art teachers in their eighties. <laughs> like it was a huge group of people. It was, it was so nice. It was fun. I had this grand vision of, uh, you know, teaching all these artists to, to, um, use their talents to do cartooning and to make their own comic books and products and stuff. And we would start these comic conventions. I even wanted to do like just a, a kid's con, like a, a comic book convention just for kids. And the kids would make their own little mini comics and we'd print up 20 copies and have all their families come and buy them from the kids. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I thought that would be a lot of fun. We never got that far with it the conventions did get pretty big you know we we did that for about five years and now there's a group a couple groups in Te uh, lubbock that are still doing those comic conventions so it's amazing that the the seeds that we planted for that little community still are growing and i like that some of those artists that i taught in those early years are they have careers now they're out making a living with their own talents their own art and I feel grateful that I could have had a little small part of that. The reason I started that group was, I remember how it just seemed so hopeless there in, in West Texas. Everybody, there wasn't really anything to live for. I mean, especially for artists. Dreams were something in other cities, you know, other states. And the idea of actually making a living as an artist in West Texas was just inconceivable. And I had people tell me that. They're like, you can't make a living with art. I was determined to prove them wrong and not only prove them wrong, but lay the groundwork for other people to do it. Logan is actually showing at some art galleries in Palm Springs. Uh, and he's been showing at galleries since he was 14 or 15. And uh, just in the last five years, he's made way more money than I did uh, by his age. So I, I wish him luck and I hope it continues to get better and better. For me, I've always felt like it wasn't enough for me to succeed. Uh, success in my mind was how many other people could I bring with me? I never really saw it as a competition. I, I never saw it as I wanted to be better than other people. I always saw it as me helping other people live up to their fullest potential allowed me to f live up to my fullest potential. And if I'm surrounded by people that are amazing and doing their absolute best it's going to help me be amazing and do my absolute best and you get that group of people in the same room and working together towards the same goals and yeah do some amazing things and the side effect of that is that you use your talents to make the world better because i can't make the world better by myself but i can help other people that's what keeps me going when the world seems kind of dark and scary and not good. We don't change the world in some big, bright, shiny moment. We change it in the little tiny moments, one-on-one -on -one with each other, helping somebody when they need it, encouraging others when they need it. All right, it's late. I need to get to bed. So I'm going to do a little bit of writing. And then call it a night, and I uh, guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Keep smiling.